No, I agree with that, that we should be allowed to lead. But we should be trained before that so that the country can run very well. No country, like I said, where you see young people achieving or practicing or actively participating in leadership roles without being mentored and trained. Check around the world, you will see. Any country that are doing that, you will see that their youth are well-orientated, are well-oriented and well-inclined with how nations are governed. And it is sadly unfortunate that people without any political, you know, virtually in Nigeria, it's safe to say that nearly every politician you can find is into politics by accident and leading to, you know, what we can call bad governance. And that's the major problem. Now, it's not enough to just wake up and engage into politics, you know, get a membership, register with a political party, and then aspire for a position. You are not ready. You don't have the experience. Now, virtually all our people in leadership, virtually many, significant number you can find around, are learning the job while they are being elected. So for every mistake that is being made, hundreds or thousands of people or constituents were affected by that mistake. And that's why if the federal government will look at the possibility of setting up an institution of mentorship that will allow people to be extracted from elementary to secondary and junior school to be recruited over the years and be trained on governance and policy, constitutional provisions, then we should be discussing about good governance. But until and unless we began to understand our civic responsibilities as citizens, we will not make much progress because we are still engaging and participating in leadership and politics with absolute intention of other ways or to some large extent with an intention of learning through the process before we can deliver our deliverables. And that's the very wrong of it. And that's why many people get to achieve nothing within the first 50 percent of their tenure and they get to try to do something and before they realize the time has already passed and they couldn't have achieved and by the time they seek re-election you know then we get not to vote for them because of what transpired and by then they have already started to learn about the job and you bring another person the same way he does the same thing and that's the problem i'm saying and this is not peculiar to the youth community alone it's equally reflect on the even elderly who contested in an election so it's a general problem it's a common problem and we as youth, we only advocate for youth participation because we feel we can do better. And I am now saying that we cannot do better unless we get mentored, we get trained properly, and we learn about governance and political process in the most decent way, not the other way that is being uh, done the way we are meant to believe that that's how politics is done. Mr. Ido, you, you, you sound very prepared yourself. You sound very, very endowed and uh, and prepared yourself for this. Yes, yes. Well, anyway, that's on the lighter note, but let's proceed quickly uh, okay. before I let you go. Uh, recently, you came up with a slogan and you are talking about better Ikira, successful Ikira, powerful Ikira, it's been Ikira, Ikira all the while. And we want to know uh, what's necessitated uh, this. Well, oh, oh, well, uh, well, well, this is a question that I try as much as possible to shun away from because uh, the process is still on the verge of consultation and we have not concluded decision on that. But I would like to comment because the question is more about governance now and how it affects uh, my fellow citizens from Ikaro local government who are act actually my indigenous uh, constituents. So in the interest of the, uh, my constituents, I would like to say a word or two or that. I don't want to dwell on that issue. But uh, what triggered and got me so interested in about my local government is that politics is local. You know, uh, it's not enough to start. Many of the people that I have seen contested for president were we supposed to start from somewhere that is far, far lesser. It's not easy to run a country as diverse as Nigeria. So, but uh, we have to, as youth, we need to identify our problems. It's from the local. And if our problem is from the local, then the question is, what do we do about it? It's not enough to aspire. It's not enough to feel. And I got interested in my local politics because how my local government is badly governed. And I said badly governed because I know what a local government should do and I don't see it happening. And that's why I'm saying the problem is that our young people who choose to go into politics needs to sanitize and clear their mindset that they are going into public service, you know. And unless and until that is being fixed, we will, see, we will keep going with the entitlement of a deserving factor that makes us to accumulate some illicit arsenal of resources and you know feel that we are governing ourselves and we become the kings or emperors in our own constituents and that's very very wrong of it now mm. many people that were given opportunity well we're given like i said we have to start from somewhere 
is not the fault of the government or the governor himself that chose to allow young people to participate in politics. Like I said, in Kaduna State, we have a system that allows us to participate and make mistakes and get corrected. And that's a very good thing anybody could do anywhere. Now, many people that were given the opportunities were on the verge of destroying that tendency. That trust and trusted on us by the governor of Kaduna State. So I'm so worried that people like I who are going down, a lot of my contemporaries who aspire to become somebody and were given the opportunity, seeing it being closed by some uh, bad people amongst us who were opportune to go there before us. And, and that's why I came up with a plan that we need to actively participate at the local level to show that there are good people still that can do better. I'm not saying I'm good people, but I'm saying that I can do better. I can make the difference. We can have a lot of land. We can achieve so many things. And that's why we come to, con we come to terms to criticize constructively and argue that things are badly run. So I will take Ikara for a case study now. In Ikara local government, I want to agree with you and just from the analysis and the polls that we run at the local level that it is well agreed and propo I'm, I'm, I'm proposed by all, from all quarters that the local government is badly governed. You can go for an excursion yourself, you will see what we are saying, considering the resources being collected and being allocated to the local government. And there are a lot of misplaced priority in governance. And, but I am not at the point faulting the local government chairman. I am actually faulting his inability or lack of capacity or outright lack of capacity and competency to deliver on the mandate and deliverables and meet the expectation of the people. And this is why all the reason why we felt that we have to do something as young people, because he is youth. He's sorry to cut you short. Is he a youth? Yeah, he's a youth within the age, within the edge close of within the edge bracket of between 30 to 35 years. 18 to 35, so he falls within the caliber of youth people. I think he's the youngest chairman in Kaduna State as we speak, and he should do better than what we see. And the most important or the problem of most of our youth is that we have the sense of uh, pride that we feel it is too a uh, low of us to ask for things that we don't know or to be advised or to seek knowledge of what we are not aware or build capacity over time so that to perform better. And that's one of the problems we are trying to challenge, we are trying to fix, that unless and until you have a clear plan and an and, and implementation strategy over what you want to do in governance, that we will make sure that we sensitize and create a serious enlightenment and awareness, pro, uh, and awareness campaigns that allows for the people to know and make their right decision when, of course, there is an election. So we had the local government has been badly governed. Like I said, I don't want to dwell on so many issues that has to do with government. But uh, we are actively trying to challenge the existing, pro pro uh, the existing governance and challenge the status quo and try to say that. And even giving, most importantly, tell the government that there are still young people who want to make a difference again and who can do better so that we don't allow some of us who have performed badly in governance to block those tendencies or opportunities given by Governor Nasri Erufai. So we don't want to disappoint the governor in all ways possible. We are trying to prove that a lot of people can do better. And because, uh, Mr. Uh, because Mr. Muhammad B have done poorly, well, poorly or terribly in governance does not mean Mr. Muhammad A cannot do better. So we want to correct the mistakes done by our contemporaries in politics and, and governance. So we are trying to do more of that, inshallah. And we are working on that. And like I said, we are drafting a governance plan for a local government in case we have concluded our decision or consultation and from you know friends and stakeholders and family that we are contesting an election, then we will must we would have been ready for the job with a clear blueprint on how to run the local government effectively. So by the time we are there, we already have a working document that shows implementation strategy and our prospect for the local government that is within the period of the tenure system of the local government. And inshallah, we are working on that. And we have done so much of that. Mm. I wish you good luck in that regard. But then, before I finally uh, let you go, uh, something cut across my mind while you were speaking, and uh, I want us to quickly trash it out. What do you make of political settlements? You see people being given offices, whether they are competent or not competent, they are given offices because, of course, they are in the political party and they, and they need to be settled. What do you make of these things? It cut it across all political parties that I've ever known. Well, it's 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 unfortunate. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that is happening in our country. You know, uh, I don't like the idea of compensating people with positions that is 
uh, that is largely uh, people's uh, office, you know, uh, because they make mistakes. And like I said earlier, that for every public officer to make a mistake, it affects millions or hundreds of thousands, you can say, of people that are depending or looking up to the office for things to be done appropriately and righteously. Uh, well, uh, it's a very big mistake. And in, in the Nigerian setting, we are only we are only we are only costing ourselves some level of uh, developmental uh, stride that we ought to have achieved in doing the right things. On the other hand, there are a lot of ways that you can you know compensate political uh, players that uh, actively assisted you during the political processes. But uh, I don't think it's right morally and whatever way you want to see it socially and. Uh, patriotic wise that you appoint people who could not uh, achieve the mandate of the office given uh, because you are not doing only harm to your administration you are doing harm to even the nation at large and that's why at a point we are always culpable in the process in which we run our country and that's why we keep having so many problems from different quarters because uh, we, we, we celebrate people who are incompetent for instance Mr. Ajibade now you should be able to know people around you if they are giving sensitive appointment that has to do with people's welfare and social well-being you should be able to protest his incompetence but you know we all have uh, that hypocrisy of, uh, of of allowing things to happen uh, it, it's a table it turns when it's my turn everybody supported me whether I'm competent or no competent and this has to do with patriotism issue uh, i think we need to do more of patriotism. We need to agree that this nation has to work fine. And if it works fine, only then everybody will benefit and live peacefully. And until that, we have to stop celebrating failures. Because when someone close to you is appointed, who you knew definitely is incompetent for the job, you shouldn't celebrate him. You are supposed to advise him to reject it. You are supposed to advise him to decline because he cannot deliver on the deliverables of that office. But you know, the hypocrisy of an average Nigerian is that we supported that opportunity. We allow, as long as it pleases, and that's why we are culpable in one way or the other in ruining our country. And it didn't affect only the people in governance. For instance, the person in charge who makes the appointee, who made the appointment is culpable. But to a large extent, it affects the general public. And that person from the general public, he is extracted. He has friends and family. Larger population that knows him more than the person who appointed him. They should look at them and believe that, you know, you cannot do that. And you know, you could simply, if you could be compensated with an appointment that is very sensitive, you should equally decline and request for another compensation. And I believe whosoever you work for will actually do something uh, very wonderful because he will believe in your honesty and sincerity. And above all, your patriotism has shown clearly devoid of any sentiment and selfish interest. And until and unless Nigerians begin to work on that approach, we will not make much progress. And we have to be less selfish in how we govern our nation. If you are given position and you know you can't deliver much about it, then you should be able to uh, confidently decline. And you decline with the purpose that the appointment is not is too big for you to deliver. And you can't deliver because so much expectation it is it's almost impossible. And once that is done, and the family can even help you decide. I know a lot of things that if you give me today, I, can, I might not do them well, and I should be able to tell myself that I cannot do them unless I'm trying to employ the services of uh, professional people who, unless I consider myself a first learner and I should be able to supervise, you know, then I can do that. But even at that, I will be conscious of how I answer to my God thereafter because I am responsible for every job given and I'm expected to deliver and that's why I'm giving. It's not about compensation, it's public service. You know, people must earn a living somewhere, but when you are in public service, it is called public service. If you want to earn a living, you go to civil service, you go to work for the government and earn salary and live a life, or enter, go to business and make your money. But when it comes to public service, you need to show commitment, patriotism, and you need to be nationalist in your decisions. Everything you do, from the beginning of the appointment to the acceptance, and execution of your own term limit in the office. So I think we need to be bold enough to refuse offers that we know we can achieve nothing or we can do more damages to our system and polity that in the long run affect all of us collectively, including myself in the office. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Arulua. It's been nice talking to you. And uh, extend our greetings to the governor talking about uh, Malam uh, uh, Nasser Erufa. The land has been doing well for the youth in that state. Yes, 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 yes. 
All right. Thank I, you very much. I, I really want to conclude by uh, by actually calling the attentions of our youth. I just want to make a prayer that our youth must consider active participation in, pol in political parties. You know, we need to identify a political party. Join it's not enough to say that the youths are not being given opportunity. You can't just sit somewhere and say that you are not being given a position or you are not considered a minister or whatsoever. You know, you need to participate in the process, prove capacity and com consistency, commitment, and, to pass, uh, and, pass, and, 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 and employ perseverance in whatever you do. Someone somewhere will note you of importance and pick you up, you know, supervise you over the time, and then you can prosper. But it is very essential for our youth to start identifying political party with the intention of joining the political party so that over the time you could have the knowledge and the requisite experience to think or dream about leading a country like Nigeria or getting a sensitive appointment. And we need to actively, uh, we need to actively uh, advocate for an opportunity that allows for the improvement of our democracy. And it, in, this includes the youth to understand that the use of toggery or any form of violence in an electoral process is for the olden days. It shouldn't be happening in the 21st century where we have technological era, where countries are competing to growth and where nations' uh, economy is building big. And we are here still practicing the olden days politics that involves political toggery. And it's very sad that many youth in government now or in elected positions are employing the same approaches. And that's why I'm saying it has to do with the orientation of our youthful community. We need to change the way we think and understand that we have longer years ahead than the people in governance or our leaders particularly. We have our 30 to 40, you know, as the case may be, depending on your age brackets. But you have a longer time to live than the people that you see as old people in leadership. So which is why it is very of critical importance to you and the general public to discourage toggery in political process and encouraging hoodlums and all forms of drug abuses to our youthful communities that uh, brings dishonesty to the system and uh, spoil our tendencies for good governance. And, and, and please, I appreciate our time is far spent and uh, we have to go now. It's really been nice talking to you. I know if I leave you, you have you have enough content to keep on going. You, but then, yes, yes, uh, yes, 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 thank you. Yeah, it's your program, Crucial Issues, talking about youth participation in politics. We've had a lot of discussion with uh, uh, Malam Mohammed Amino, really. Of course, he had highlighted numerous points as regarding this topic. The discussion still continues. Please follow up on our various uh, social media platform and drop your comments in the comment box. Thank you very much to meet next time. I remain your host, Ajibadi Thank you, Ajibadi. Thank you, Ajibadi. Thank you.